Argentina is a breathtaking massive country that is full of majestic landscapes. It offers an endless ocean of experience that suits every taste and way of life, ranging from outdoor adventures to cosmopolitan glamour. It is famous for many intriguing reasons and things most notably is rich colourful culture and unparalleled unique tourist destinations, world-class salmon and trout fishing, glacier skiing in the serene mesmerising Andes and endless gorgeous landscapes. By all means, it is a very diverse, beautiful, mostly developed and educated country that is totally worth visiting. However, its economy keeps hitting a wall of inflation and national debt defaults that leaves its people punished even though it is very rich in numerous resources and fertile land in addition to a very diverse industrial complex. Today, we will take you on a journey to one of the most amazing nations on earth and enlighten you about some of its interesting facts and reasons why it is becoming a poor country that needs some serious economic restructuring. The economic history of Argentina is extremely well documented and researched. Its turbulent economy turned into an economical paradox that mystifies experts. It achieved great economic, financial and industrial milestones and development in the early 20th century, but experienced an extreme reversal that inspired an enormous wealth of literature and diverse analysts on the causes of this decline. Since independence from Spain in 1816, it has defaulted on its debt nine times, inflation often hits in the double digits, and reached as high as 5,000%, resulting in several large currency devaluations. The 1.2 million square kilometers pampas region of endless yawning plains of fertile land turned Argentina into a rich nation in the first few decades of the 20th century. It outgrew Canada and Australia in population, total income and per capita income. During this period, it was ranked as the world's 10th wealthiest state per capita. However, in the 1930s, the Argentine economy deteriorated due to serious political instability after a military junta took power and in seven decades of civilian constitutional government. Yet its economic greatness still lasted until the mid-1960s and its per capita GDP remained higher than that of Austria, Italy, Japan and Spain. The economic catastrophe that began in the early 1970s was caused due to an imbalance between achieving industrial self-sufficiency and the flow of investment in agricultural production. Additionally, the consecutive governments created a fertile ground for inflation by growing governmental spending and increasing wages without taking into consideration the matters of productivity, trade deficit, national debt levels, long-term sustainability, and the immensely negative effects of chaotic money printing sprees. As a result, in the early 1990s, the government reined in inflation by making the peso equal to value to the US dollar and privatized numerous state-run companies using part of the proceeds to reduce the massive national debt. However, a hard recession in 2001 hit the country and the government again devalued the peso. By 2005, the economy had recovered, but the country again defaulted in 2014 and 2020. COVID-19 also acted as the final bullet of death. Now, Argentina is heading for total economic demise unless something radical is done. According to experts, Argentina's historical over-reliance on commodity exports and unsustainable government spending fueled frequent boom-bust cycles, resulting in political instability and economic decline in the decades that followed. The number and amount of natural resources Argentina possesses should have always translated into automatic wealth, but the lack of proper management and historical political feuds had caused a persistent imbalance that often rendered such natural wealth unproductive and unsustainable. The Argentine economy and industries are powered by the country's abundance of energy resources. By the late 20th century, the country was self-sufficient in fossil fuels and hydroelectric generation and it had become a petroleum exporter. It has more than 2.5 trillion barrels of proven oil reserves, plenty of shale natural gas and good amounts of iron ore, uranium, lead, zinc, silver, copper, manganese and tungsten. These deposits are large enough for sustainable investment growth. 
Argentina is also a very efficient producer of electricity through hydroelectric stations, gas power plants, and nuclear reactors. It actually exports electricity to countries such as Brazil and Uruguay. Its powerful and vast agribusiness sector gave rise to a strong and diversified manufacturing sector, which accounts for about one-fifth of the GDP and nearly one-sixth of the workforce. Argentina is also a de facto world leader in the export of beef, hide, soya bean oil, soya bean meal, corn, delivery trucks, bran, ground nuts, and to a lesser extent olive oil and sugar. Note that Argentina, the world's fifth largest beef exporter, banned the export of beef in May 2021 in an effort to keep domestic prices low. The ban will remain effective until late 2024. Argentina has some hopes that its economy would grow fast between 2021 and 2024. However, that was feasible before COVID-19 emerged and caused global chaos. Today, the situation in Argentina is quite alarming. Since October 2021, prices have gone up by an astonishing 88% and thus inflation is heading toward 100% and probably more by early 2023. The out-of-control inflation rate is increasingly rendering the government crippled and out of choice. Wages lag and increasing social distress are already leading to a record level of protests so far this year. The growing gap between salaries and inflation is leading to routine angry protests across the country. This led the government to relaunch a program that freezes prices on over 1,500 products. As of right now, Argentina would not be able to comply with its $44 billion agreement with the International Monetary Fund. The government strategy is also colliding with feasible solutions due to next year's presidential elections. And as usual, political parties are more interested in winning elections than implementing feasible long-term sustainable economic solutions because such moves can result in delayed economic stability and their opponents are likely to capitalize on. So, what the current government has been effectively doing since it rose to power is patchwork and temporary fixes. Many of Argentina's President Albo Fernandez's ministers resigned in recent months, including most of his economic team. In a nutshell, the political system has become even messier than the economy. Regular protests are interrupting daily life, unrest is heating up, especially among the poorest in the population, which typically vote for the current ruling leftist coalition. Prices are going up across the board and the government's policies are miserably failing in taming the inflation beast. Poverty is rising and thousands of families are entering extreme poverty daily. Inequality has reached extremely alarming levels. The powerful unions are securing wage hikes above current inflation levels, which actually leads to higher inflation because the government is simply printing or borrowing more money to please them. Private corporations are also raising prices to accommodate the higher wages of unionized employees. Informal cash and under-the-table jobs are on the rise and they are paying less than the minimum wage, thus creating more poverty because workers are losing their buying power. Most of the recently recorded job gains are in sectors where wages are losing against inflation, such as construction, retail, hotels, restaurants, and real estate. Political polarization is also a recurring problem. The diversiveness in Argentina, known commonly as La Grita or the Rift, is leading to democratic dysfunction and policy reversals whenever a new administration takes power. The country has become a very undesirable destination for foreign investors. The climate is simply discouraging new local and international investments. More and more international companies have been either downsizing or leaving Argentina. Argentina has also lost its access to international debt markets and is now turning to China, which can backfire since it is uncharted territory and can lead to serious tensions with the USA. All of this leads us to wonder where Argentina is heading. The answer to this question is not simple. China loves investing and trading with Argentina, but it would not lend the struggling country tens of billions of dollars to pay off debts to the IMF, the Paris Club, and other private lenders. Meanwhile, the UK is still indirectly mobilizing on the international stage against Argentina due to the ongoing dispute over the Falkland Islands. The EU is drowning in problems due to inflation and the Ukraine war, and the USA is also in the same boat and facing even greater challenges as Russia and China try to impose a new global financial order.
All of these facts combined lead us to conclude that Argentina must find a homemade solution, which obviously can only manifest into reality with the end of political diversiveness while moving towards the ideology of the political center, and more importantly, not repeating the same old mistakes that never worked before. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, share, comment, and hit the bell to get a notification every time we upload another awesome informative and educational video that takes you to new places across the globe as we explore issues that shaped and are bound to shape the future of nations